we are going to do the welt pocket. Now there's a few pieces that you'll need to do this. This is the um, pocket, the, the little uh, rectangular fabric that you can physically see on the front of the coat where you put your hand in. And I'll show you where that's gonna go in a moment. So you'll need two of those out of the same fabric as the main part of your coat, unless you want it to be a contrast. Then you'll need four of the pocket bag. Now you'll note on here that it says fabric cut four, not lining cut four. Now this does is, is open to interpretation and it does depend on what type of fabric you've got. So for example, um, I am making my um, coats with an actual lining fabric and I'm not planning to put anything huge and heavy into them. So I have cut mine out of the... Uh, the actual lining fabric itself, which you'll see shortly, not out of my main fabric. But if you were using it out of a, if you were doing it out of a raincoat fabric, for example, and you were expecting to be out and about, and you're expecting to be putting things in your, like your hands in your pocket, or a little kid putting stones in their pocket, you don't want to have a lining, it'll just disintegrate in no time. You'd want to use your actual external fabric. So use cut this out of whichever one you think makes the most sense for what you're making um i mine are going to be out of lining fabric and this is the bit that your hand physically goes into in the in the pocket now um, we have done these sized so that it fits the top of the welt um the top of the bit where your hand goes in and so that it fit a phone for ladies at the time when we when we made the pattern and for kids where they could get a fist in with a bit of stuff so you also might like to make it a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller it's up to you what i would caution you though is not making it too much bigger in this direction here because you'll run into the buttons um, if you're going to add size i would add it down this way to give the pocket a little bit more depth um, one of my test versions i um i added about an inch and a half in depth and that would have been great if I wasn't so short. And as it was, I actually couldn't get, couldn't reach my hand all the way to the bottom of the pocket without bending down. So um, add a little bit of depth if you want to, or not, cut it out exactly as is. And then you'll have your front and your side front, which will be stitched together. Now what I want to show you is where the welt pocket actually stitches on. So this pattern piece here, you will have stitched these two together. And what you will see here is that you've got your welt pocket marking that pretty much lines up um, once you place it over the fabric. Now, don't be fooled by these horizontal dark lines here. They are the grid that you use to tape the pattern together. If you're using A4 paper or US letter paper, you won't have these on your paper if you've done A0 and you don't need to line those up like that. What you need to do is line up the pieces of paper um, if you want to have a look at where this sits. Um, but what we are going to do is mark it onto the fabric um, uh, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment and so you won't actually need to take these together. I just want to show you how it goes so you can imagine how the welt pocket is constructed. If you've done welt pockets before, you can just fast forward me for a few minutes because you won't need to know this. Um, otherwise, I will explain to you how it works. So this is um, the left hand side as I look at it of my coat and this is my welt pocket. We're going to fold this right sides together and we're going to stitch the ends and then turn it through so that we've got this nice little neat, this nice little neat um, flap of fabric here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place that um, up, buttered up against these, see these lines here? We're going to place it buttered up against that line there and we're going to stitch it on. And then later, these ends will obviously be folded in, then later we flip this up and these raw edges there get hidden underneath and then that becomes the bit that you put your hand into. And then on the, and there's a hole on the inside and on the inside of the coat is your pocket bag. So that is inside the coat and you can put your hand into there and into your lovely pocket. So for kids, another option if they're not going to be putting wet stuff in there is to use something like a um, uh, like a polar fleece or something really nice and cosy that they can put their hands into if they're going to be wearing it out in, in the cold. So next up we're going to transfer these markings onto your fabric. Now I've placed my, fab my 
pattern piece onto my fabric and because it's already stitched together down this side front seam um, I can't use this as a raw edge to line up so I've lined it up using this raw edge the very top and the very bottom on both of these and you could pin them one at a time you don't need to do them at the same time um, then I'm going to get a pin not a clip but a pin and I'm going to do the same thing as we did for the um, uh, for the darts at the very beginning is I'm going to put a pin through each of the corners so there is one there one there and this is easiest on your ironing board because then you can squish the pins straight in and you don't run the risk of them going down so I want to make sure that I go straight down and then I'm just kind of pushing it off to the side so it doesn't fall over so straight down and then in a bit because if you just go in like that you're not going to get it really accurate so I go straight down and then over and what I now want to do is lift this up just like we did for the darts and I'm looking for where the bottom of that pin is and I'm going to place another pin directly in there to get that really hmm, uh, really accurate there we go I was not so accurate the first time and then I'm looking for the bottom of that pin so the, where the pin is sticking through here, I've put another pin in there and I can get rid of that pattern piece. Now, before these pins fall over, I would recommend that you poke them into the fabric. Now, I poke mine in towards where the rectangle is going to sit, but you could poke them out. It's really irrelevant where the end of the pin is. We're only interested in that first hole that the pin makes. And then I'm going to do it the other piece here and I'm going to try and keep that pin from sliding out lift that up there we go so I'm going to get rid of my pattern pieces and poke those in there next up where we have these straight lines on the pattern piece we want to draw these onto our fabric with tailor's chalk now um, this is a traditional piece of tailor's chalk or you might use a pencil whichever you use it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what color it is um, but what does matter is that you get a straight line and that you get uh, that you get it um, um, as accurate as possible because this is going to be where the pocket goes now i really worry about this making <laughs> a permanent mark on my beautiful wool blend and if i is not filming this I would probably eyeball it because I'd be so worried about getting my wool blend with Taylor's chalk on it that won't come off <laughs> so I'm looking for the very top edge of the pin not any of these bottom ones they're just where I shoved it in to stop it um, stop it uh, falling out of the fabric as I moved it around and I'm gonna draw that line so once I've got that I can draw it in a bit stronger and that's gone a bit wobbly because I've wobbled it on the pin. There we go. So I am happy now. I've got my little um, rectangle drawn on. And I want to be very careful not to rub that off yet. Obviously, I want it gone <laughs> before the end of the sew. Um, but I don't want to um, I don't want to lose it just yet. Next up, we are going to take this pattern piece and we're going to prepare that one. All we're doing with this one is folding it right sides to right side like I did before or like I showed you with the pattern piece and we're going to clip the short ends or pin them whatever you want to use and then we're going to stitch down each short end using a half inch seam allowance and then we'll clip this folded corner here and turn them through so if you fold it right sides together and then stitch down each of these sides using a half inch seam allowance this is now stitched. There we go, you can see down, I've stitched down either side. And I'm going to take my scissors and trim off um, that, the corner on the folded edge. And then on the same on the other side. And then I'm going to turn it through. Now, when I turn it through, oh, the mess, the mess. Uh, when I turn it through, uh, what I want to do is turn that through and make quite a point with this. And get it as pointy as I can so I'm going to use my tip of my scissors just here um, and I know this is a wool fabric so it's not going to turn through 
precisely. But if I take if I take my thumb and I use my thumb to turn it through, that also usually does it quite well. And in fact, if you've got a fabric that's not quite as bulky, what you can do is not trim the corners at all, but just use your thumb to press it through so that when you turn it through, the seam allowance here is what holds this um, this really nice and rectangular um, and then once you have done that press it um, I am NOT going to top stitch on here I know some trench coats do have top stitching on the welt piece uh, I'm not going to do that because I want a more of a traditional trench coat look um, so I'm going to press that now this is my welt piece and this is the raw edge on this side let me show you so that is, um, see there, the raw edge, and that's the folded edge there. I'm going to take my raw edge here, and I want to draw a line um, using my tailor's chalk that is a um, quarter of an inch in from the raw edge. I'm not interested in the folded one, I'm only interested in the raw edge. And I'm doing this, it doesn't really, if both sides are identical, it doesn't matter which side you do it on. Um, but if they're not both identical, then stitch this on the side that you want to be underneath, hidden inside the pocket, when the pocket is um, on the garment. So I've drawn myself a stitch line, quarter of an inch in from the edge, and then I'm going to get my coat. And uh, the way this is aligned is this is the where the welt pocket is. This the hem of the coat down here. The top of the coat is up here. This will be my side seam, and this will be the centre front piece that flaps over. So if I take my welt piece and I'm going to place it so that the stitch line is facing up, and I'm going to butt that up against the against the stitch line here. I'm not placing it so the lines are on top of each other. I'm placing it so that the raw edge of this welt piece is butted up against that marking that I've made, um, the marking that I've made on the rectangular. And then I'm going to pin this in place. And then when I stitch it, I will be stitching along this um, blue stitch line there, really hoping that it doesn't ever, um, that it does come off my garment. Now if you have not, um, if you found this a bit difficult to draw this on accurately um, then what I would do is recommend that you, um, let's say it's slightly wider or slightly narrower than your welt, um, then what I would do is line it up centre as best you can and then place your pattern piece over one more time, lining it up either from the bottom of the pattern piece or from the top, not using this side seam but keep it aligned with here aligned with the top and aligned with the bottom and then check that this line here uh, matches up where you've got your, your rectangle of your welt here. And what we will be doing is stitching that down and then that will fold over to form the welt. So what I have done now is I have stitched along this line that we drew quarter of an inch in from the edge of the welt. So that is now stitched, hope you can see that well. Um, and it is stitched from there to there, along there, quarter of an inch in. So you can still, well it's rubbing off a little bit now, but you can still, thank goodness, yay, it's going to come off. Um, you can still see the line that I've drawn, which is my marking on the pattern piece. So this stitching is quarter of an inch in from that. Now the next thing you need to do is take um, one of your um, uh, pocket pieces and um, on the wrong side of the pocket piece, not the right side, draw a line quarter of an inch in from the raw edge again that and you want it to be um, centered so let me move this so you can see you want to center the line vertically so you center the line that way vertically um, and make it so that it's the same length as the welt piece you do not want to draw it all the way from the top all the way to the bottom you're drawing it the same length as the welt piece so draw that um, a quarter of an inch in from the raw edge and then we're gonna that's the right side of my lining that's the wrong side so the wrong side is up and then I'm gonna place this so that it is butted up here against this line and my pocket um, is facing completely the wrong way upside down don't worry it's gonna be okay <laughs> we are gonna fix it um, uh, 
how do I explain how this is going to work? So um, this is, remember, this is the top of the garment up here. So this is my, um, this is my armhole here. And then um, this is my pocket here. So I'm going to, let me pin this in place first so that you can see it. Um, and this, so this is um, pinned quarter of an inch in from that marking on the main side front and front uh, pattern piece um, and it's uh, butted right up against the raw edges of the welt. So these raw edges here are butted right up against each other and this stitch line is exactly parallel to the edges of this of the welt piece here. And uh, what I'm going to do in a moment is I'm going to stitch along there from one end to the other. But first, before I do that, I want to show you how the pocket's going to go together so that you can understand. Once we've finished this, we're going to cut a hole in the middle. Not yet. <laughs> but once we've finished it, and then we'll poke that through the hole onto the other side of the garment. So then, underneath, our pocket bag will then suddenly be right way up to put your phone, put your keys, all of that stuff in from the top. And the right side of the lining will be on the inside of the pocket and the wrong side of the lining, <coughs> excuse me, will be inside your actual coat. And then, um, because that will have poked through the hole, this will flap up and it will cover the little hole that we're gonna make. So um, you'll see how we do that in just a moment. But for now, butt those up against each other and just stitch from one end to the other end. Do not stitch all the way from one end to the pocket of the other, just along this marking that you made that's the same w length as the welt piece. And um, uh, you can take these bottom markings of your pocket out so that you don't um, pin yourself. Um, in theory, you can remove the top ones as well, but if you're a bit worried about losing your markings, then rubbing off while we're working, just leave them in for now. I've now stitched this from here down to here on top of the markings that I made. And this is the wrong side of my pocket. That's the right side of my pocket piece. So now I'm going to take my matching pocket piece. It's also um, uh, wrong side up. Um, that's the right side facing down. So there's right side to right side. And I have drawn another little line, quarter of an inch in, again, the same length as the welt piece here. You can see it does not go into the seam allowance of the pocket. And what I want to do is place it so that the pockets are, if you can see there, a mirror image of each other. So this is the pocket now that looks like it's going to be the right, right way up. So remember that's the top of the garment, this is the bottom, and your hand will go in the pocket like that. Isn't that a lovely big pocket for all your stuff? I love the pockets on this trench coat. Um, so um, I'm going to pin along this line here and if I butt these two edges up against each other essentially what I'm doing is I'm pinning directly on top of this line here. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. Um, I'm pinning directly on top of that seam line of where we stitched the actual welt piece on. So that should be, these two lines should be directly parallel and I'm pinning um, straight onto um, straight onto that, that seam. Now, um, the most important thing here is not to stitch past the length of this line. If you're at all concerned about it, just go a little bit less. It doesn't matter if it's slightly less, but it will matter if it's slightly more. So um, be very, very, very cautious not to stitch past the length of this line here. And if you're using quite um, a thick fabric like mine, um, you might not be able to pin all the way through. You might need to um, just pin part way through. Now, before we stitch, I'm going to show you the back of the garment so you can see what's going on here. So here we go. There's our armhole and our front to side front seam line. And you can see our pocket here is on a diagonal. <coughs> Excuse me. We've got um, our one line from the welt and our one line from the pocket piece so far. And we're about to stitch. We're about to stitch all the way along this whoops, all the way along the same seam line here. So we're going to be stitching directly on top of our previous stitching. So I've now stitched along here. And um, this bit is the bit that always freaks me out every time I do a welt pocket. We're now going to cut our garment. And what we want to do is cut a hole in the middle of this gap here. Not all the way to the end, but about kind of 
half to quarter of an inch in and then we're going to cut out on little diagonals out to these seam lines here. So we end up with a little flap along here, a little flap along here, a little triangular flap at the end and a little triangular flap at the end. And then we can tuck those seam allowances inside as we put our bags through the, in, through the middle of the gap and fold that up. Um, <laughs> this still freaks me out every time I do it. So you can do it from the front of the garment. I find it quite difficult with all these seam allowances here, which is why I flip it over to the back. Now, when you do this, a couple of things to watch for. One is um, make sure your pocket bags are out of the way. Number two is you can just cut or you can draw some lines to cut along so that you know um, you're not gonna make any mistakes. Now, I'm not sure how well you can see this, but I'm going to draw a little triangle in from the top edge there. So those are my two seam lines, and I've drawn a little triangle into the middle. And then I'm going to do the same on the bottom edge. So I've drawn a little triangle in, and then I'm going to draw straight down the middle a line directly in between my two seam lines like that. So I'm going to lift this up so you can see it. That line there is in the middle, and it's straight through the middle of my two lines of stitching, and then these little triangles out to the outside, and then we cut. Now, when you do that, when you do this, what I'm doing here is I'm using these fingers to make sure that firstly, I don't have any of this bunched up in my way and accidentally cut my pocket pieces, and I'm separating out these, it's really hard to show because I'm just doing it by feel. I'm separating out the seam allowance here so that I get, when I cut, it comes cleanly through here and not cutting anything else around there. And then on this side, what I'm doing is I'm just following the line. Now, I would not recommend starting in here where this seam allowance is, as I was about to do, is I would start out here and use just the very... <coughs> excuse me, very tip of your scissors to get in because I just want to get my scissors into that hole. I don't want to make a massive cut. I just want to get my tip of my scissors in and you'll notice again I am being very naughty and using my thread scissors which I promise I will sharpen after this sew along. Um, but I just want to use the very tip to get some really good control. So hopefully you can see I've cut all the way through there so I can get my fingers through from the other side. And then I'm going to just keep moving it around so that I can then cut all the way down my little line that I've made. Being very careful not to get anything from the other side. And as you go through the seam allowance, it's going to feel thicker. And just be careful that you're not then accidentally cutting something from the other side as well. Thinking, gosh, this feels thick. I bet it's just the seam allowance. And no, it's not. So... Here we go, using the right very tip of the scissors, and now we've got a great big hole in your beautiful coat that you're making. Ah! So, turning it back over to the front, now we've got a nice big hole that we can poke our pocket bags through. Now, when we were clipping, I've gone right up as close as I can get to the stitching without cutting it. But when you get to the front, you might find that you need to clip a little bit further. The trick is to get it close enough to the stitching that we can turn it through nicely, like I'll show you in a moment, without actually cutting into the stitching or making a hole that you're going to see. So the first thing we're going to do is poke this one through here. And I would do this in stages so that you can get a really nice press. So ignore this out bottom pocket bag, poke the top one through first and use your iron to press this bit flat here so that that's a really nice crisp edge. So um, do that first and then we'll do the next pocket bag. So I've got that laying nice and flat now. I've just pressed just along there and then I'm going to turn this one through as well and you'll find it sits really weirdly like that. <coughs> that's completely normal, don't worry about it. What we're going to do shortly is pull it up like that, stitch those down and then you see you can put your hand into your pocket and your hand comes all the way through into your pocket, yay. So get those all the way through. Uh, what you might find when you do this is you might need to clip a little bit further in to get your 
lining through to the other side so that you can't see it when the welt goes over. But what you want to do is be very careful not to clip further than this point here. Otherwise, when you when we stitch our welt down later, there'll be a little hole out to the side. So go less. Less is definitely more with this. Um, but we want to bring it all the way through, flip it over to the other side, and then give the other one a bit of a press as well. So we want this to lay really nice and flat here. So flip your, your weld up and give this a nice press here to get a really nice crisp edge on there. And then we're going to stitch our pocket bags together. So give them both a press. I have um, pressed my pocket bags flat now, so both of them are nice and flat. Um, they're both really crisp and clean on these edges here. And then what I've done is I've placed them right sides, I mean they're obviously right sides together already, but I have um, then clipped them around the outside, or you could use pins. And what I want to do next is sew around here, not catching the, the actual coat itself, just sew the two pieces of pocket bag from um, the as close as you can get to the edge along here, because if you don't go all the way to the edge, you'll have a little hole. Um, as close as you can get to the edge from here, all the way around the pocket bag, all the way around to here. Again, um, as close as you can get to the edge there without actually catching the garment. And then um, what I like to do is actually stitch around the pocket bag a second time, especially around this bottom bit here, because that's where the stress is as lots of things go in there. Um, and if you're using a really delicate feeling lining like this one versus quilt and cotton, for example, um, that does go a long way. And something that takes you 30 seconds or a minute to sew just around there again means that you're not ever going to have to delve inside your coat to find your keys at the bottom down here somewhere because you've made a hole. So don't worry about any of this lying flat at the minute. We're just aligning these edges and stitching around. So I've now stitched around uh, my pocket and you can see that it's a little bit messy and it needs a good kind of press. Um, and I've, you can see I've done two rows of stitching. I'm not too concerned about them being super neat. I just want to have, particularly around the bottom part of the pocket, it to be really nice and um, and flat. And my um, lining, I don't know what's with me in picking these slippery fabrics. My lining has slipped against itself and it's just pulled slightly as it's come around the corner. But it's going to be inside my, inside my garment, so that's going to be okay. Um, and then... The next bit is actually a lot easier in the pattern to see than, um, than on camera. Um, there are these tiny little, tiny, tiny little triangles. It's where you cut that V. Tiny triangles will have popped through onto the side of the fabric. And if they haven't, pull them through. And then if you can, machine or hand stitch them to the seam allowance of your pocket so that those, I, like I can't hardly even see them myself, the tiny little triangles are then held there and they don't pop back through to the right side of the fabric. Once you have done that, flip your welt over and now, your, well, your pattern piece over, it's starting to look like an actual pocket. You can put your hand in, you've got your hand inside the pocket here, doesn't that look beautiful? And then now what we need to do is stitch this actually down. So make sure everything is tucked all nicely inside and you don't have anything sticking out these edges. And what we want to do is pin this down. Now, um, there are two ways you can do it. You can, if you want to, line the point of the welt up with where your pin went in so that you know that's in exactly the right place. Now, that would be the technically correct way of doing it. However, I know from doing loads of welt pockets that sometimes, especially if like this is a thick fabric, for example, this won't be sitting exactly flat. There'll be a slight curve as the fabric comes as the fabric comes out of here and up and over and I don't want to pull this and make a little pleat down the bottom I want this to be really smooth so I'm not really interested in where that pin is I want to lay this down so that it is as whoops so that it is as neat as possible so I'm going to take my pins out uh, which might alarm you you could do it with them in if you really want to and I'm going to um, what I really recommend you do is do a lot of pressing to get this really nice and flat and I want to pin this down so that it is flat and there are no wrinkles in my fabric at all. And then I'm going to double check. Ow, whoopsie daisy. Double check afterwards. And also make sure that when you're pinning it, 
you don't have your pocket bag, that your pocket bag is down and out of your way. You're not pinning it to your pocket bag at all. So um, I have pinned these here. I want to make sure that there's not little tucks just here. And before I stitch this, I'm actually going to go away and I'm going to machine, I'm not machine, I'm going to press this down with my iron and make sure this is really nice and smooth here because that is a really nice, beautiful welt. And if there were little tucks in here or little bits of the lining sticking out or any of that, it just ruins the look. So tuck them all up inside and then we're going to stitch along here. Now, you can machine stitch that. Um, if you machine stitch it, I would recommend you start at this end and stitch along towards that end. Don't start here and move down because then you can end up with a little tuck here. But start at this end, move along and just go super, super, super slow. The other way you can do it is from the front of the fabric to get a needle and thread and just go in there and do a little invisible stitch there. Now that will hold it, but it's not quite as strong as doing it from the other side. So um, the last option, which is what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna flip mine over and I can see where my pin is, which is where I wanna stitch, and I'm gonna stitch it from the back here. And it's gonna be really messy and <laughs> I'm gonna do cross, cross, cross like that, and then across and across and across like that. But I'm gonna hand stitch over that several times so that this is really, really, really secure and will not, no matter how many times I put my hand into the pocket and I chuck my keys in and I, it's really cold and I'm pushing my hand all the way into the pocket, no matter how many times I pull at this, I do not want this to come unstitched. That's so annoying if that kind of thing comes unstitched. So. I'm going to really, really, really go over and over and over this, but I'm going to do it on the back so that you can't see. But every time I hand stitch this, I'm going to just turn it over and check that my needle has not come through to this top part of the fabric and that you cannot see any thread from this side. So I'm going to be hand stitching through as many of the layers as I can because you've got the layer of this side front piece and then you've got both sides of the welt plus the seam allowance so that's five layers of fabric just there to stitch through and i want to be catching three or four layers of fabric as i'm stitching so that it's really secure but i do not want to catch this top layer there so that's what i'm going to do now is go away and hand stitch this side and this side um, and that's usually the kind of thing that i leave till the um, bit later in in the process and i'll sit and do it while watching tv or something because that's kind of kind of nice but before that I'm going to press and make sure these are really flat and that I've got these positioned exactly how I want them. So go and do that, either machine or hand stitch this, and then repeat the whole thing with the other pocket on the other side of the garment. So you've got a left and a right. We're going to do the patch pockets. So if you are following along with this version, the way it works is that you will need two fabric and two lining. And the reason for that is rather than just tucking the edges in like this and then stitching around, we actually place the fabric and the lining right sides together and then we stitch from about here all the way up and around and round and round and down, leaving a little gap at the bottom, about inch and a half, two, or two inches, I'd say. Um, then we clip the corners, turn it all through, press it, and then you've got a completely enclosed pocket with the lining on the back side of it and the fabric on the right side of it that then we can just place on the garment and stitch like that so that you put your hand in the pocket and there's a lining behind it and the fabric on top and it feels nice, it looks nice, there's no raw edges and it's also a much sturdier pocket than just using your main fabric and turning the corners under particularly because a lot of the fabrics that people use for this are wool blend and things like that. And to put a pair of keys in could then damage the inside of the pocket. So that's why we use a lining on the pocket. A couple of things I wanna show you about it. Firstly, is that you will have noticed the pattern piece has rounded corners. Um, a couple of different hacks that you could try and one that I'm doing on this coat is to actually square off the bottom edges of the pocket. I don't want um, the look on my pocket to have rounded edges, so I'm gonna do mine square. But if you wanna do yours rounded, you would just cut it as per the pattern piece and trim off these little corners. Another thing you can do is when we drafted this coat pattern, um, that was about the size, an iPhone, which is the phone I had, 
was about that big. <laughs> so it fit really nicely in the pocket. And iPhones have got bigger. They keep changing the sizes. And then there's other popular brands as well. And so if you look at this pocket and you think, hmm, I'm not sure it kind of looks like it might fit my phone, grab your phone and pop it on here and check, does it fit? Remember, you're going to have the seam allowances off on, on each side. So you've got half an, out, half an inch that you're going to lose all the way around. And if it doesn't, just cut it bigger. Like you could cut it so that it was boom, 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 boom. This is, this is your pattern now that you've got it to do what you want to do with it. So if you want whopping big pockets, make whopping big pockets. So what you need to do is grab this thing. I've got my lining and my fabric, place them right sides together and then um, pin them together. And whether you've got the curved edges or the straight edges, stitch from about here up and either around your curved edge or pivoting at the edge here up, across, across, down and leave about a two inch gap at the bottom. And then we're gonna clip the corners or clip into them on the curves, clip the corners, turn it through, give it a good press and tuck the raw edges in. Here is one I prepared earlier. <laughs> I've got my pocket here. You can see that the lining is on the inside and the fabric is on the outside. And what I have done is I have stitched it to my garment um, along one side, along one side and along one side. And what I've actually done, if you can see that, is I've stitched twice around the outside to make sure that it's really, really, really sturdy. So there's two lines of stitching. One is just less than, uh, just slightly more than one eighth of an inch, somewhere between one eighth and a quarter. And then the other one is quarter of an inch away from that. So, um, I, and I have also, as you can see, made my pocket bigger than the pattern piece. So I actually took this pattern piece and I added half an inch on all the way around because I thought I want my finished pocket to be about this size, not the size minus the half inch seam allowance on either side. Now, something I want to show you and the reason I'm showing you a finished pocket is I've had a bit of trouble with this pocket. Um, this fabric um, is driving me insane. Um, the lining is slippery, the fabric is slippery, the outside is stretching, the lining is not, it's just insane. So what I ended up doing is I tried a number of different methods to be able to stitch this together with um, like this so that it was stitched around the outside as I showed you just before and it has not worked in all ways that I've tried it. I have tried base hand basting it. I've tried um, using a temporary interfacing. I've tried using. I've tried so many different things. And what uh, I've been away from the camera for hours. It might have been seconds for you, but I have been a long time trying this pocket. And what I ended up doing, and I thought I would share it um, so that you could see that sometimes the method in the pattern while very accurate and great if you're using fabric like this might not work for other fabrics and sometimes you have to adjust a pattern to what your fabric requires so what i actually did was i got my my pattern piece and i ironed to the back of my uh, my main fabric double-sided interfacing which is interfacing that is sticky on both sides so i ironed it to the back of my pocket then I was able to place my pocket right sides together with my interfacing on the outside and I stitched around and because and that then gave it enough stability to for the fabrics not to move against each other and for one not to stretch while the other stayed stable and twist all around and all the weird things it was doing. Um, then I clipped it, turned it through, and then when I pressed it the second time, you can see that this is now completely bonded one to the other. And what I've got is in a coat, which is, feels more like a cardigan, it's so lovely and soft, I've now got a really stable pocket. So I can put my phone in there, put my keys in there, and that pocket is not going anywhere. It is really, really, really sturdy. So I don't, that also, I mean, it does, if you can, I don't know if you can see this, see how much, how squishy this is, but this doesn't do that now. So it does, the pocket does, as soon as I start to put my hand in, I can feel that it's not the same. It actually does look on the coat like it's the same, because it is obviously the same external fabric. So there's a little trick of what to do. Uh, what you need to do though, is place your fabric on the markings. And I'm just gonna get the markings so that I can show you where to stitch it on. 
Here is my front pattern piece and I've placed it onto my fabric so you can see roughly where it falls. And I've got my patch pocket here. Obviously there'll be a half inch seam allowance in either or all the way around. But this marking here, that welt pocket marking, is the one you're looking for. It goes like that and it's short and then long and it's just over from all of the buttons and just down from um, the length and shortened lines and the, um, the belt loop marking is up here. So it'll be in slightly different places depending on what size you're doing, but that's roughly where it is. And then you place your patch pocket, you're looking for this corner here, not that one there, that corner there, and you place your patch pocket so that the corner matches up with that and so that it runs vertically. So that's the vertical edge there and you're keeping your patch pocket upright and you're gonna place it on that marking there. So when we go to do it on the fabric, let me get this back in the right place. There we go, my pocket will be exactly there. And you're gonna stitch one side down along and back up. And then if like me, you want a really secure pocket, I would do it again slightly in. Now, if you have done your pocket a different size or a slightly different shape, uh, you might find that if you've done it, say, much wider, then you're going to run into the buttonholes and the buttons here. So then you might want to place your pocket further along so that it fits, so that it's not in, in line with where the buttons are going to be. If you've done it really, really, really deep, like, you know, big chunk, you might find that that means that then as you put your hand in, you can't reach the bottom of your pocket while you're wearing it. So if you have adjusted the size of your pocket, what I recommend you do is just drape your coat over your shoulders, pin this pattern piece to where it's supposed to go on your coat, and then put your hand in and just check that you're comfortable with it, whether you want to move it around. Because while we've put it where we think it should go from a pattern drafting perspective and for the proportions of the coat we were trying to achieve, this is your pattern now that you've got it. So you place it where you want it to go um, and then stitch it on. Thank you.